What's up guys, Derek from PlaysMoreDates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about my first cold approach and uh, I'm going to be reacting to it. I actually have it on video, believe it or not. So I don't think a lot of people would have, <laughs> this, is, this isn't this is even me just saying the first one I ever recorded, like this is the first one I ever conducted in my life. I happen to have it on video. So uh, <laughs> kind of some golden material that, I've had this on my to-do list for a while. I just have been really neglecting some of the dating topics and if you're an OG of the channel, you know that the channel was initially supposed to be largely about lifestyle and as well as dating because before I got into bodybuilding, before I got into the rabbit holes of pharmacology, I was in this stupid, weird PUA scene where all my life revolved around getting laid and going on shit tons of dates and essentially being a douchebag. So I'm past that now, but it is worth reflecting on to give advice in my opinion for what I learned throughout my trials and tribulations, as well as things that most guys just don't do now. Things like cold approaching, which are going to develop you as a man, in my opinion, and set you apart from all the other dweebs who are too afraid to talk to girls in real life and have to message them over DMs and shit. So not that that doesn't work. I'm just saying that it's good to be a hybrid where you actually have balls and you are, you know, like good looking enough or have enough fucking clout on Instagram or whatever to get girls there. So anyways, going into my cold approach here, um, this was, um, what was it? Um, it's gotta be eight years ago now. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's so many things wrong with this. First of all, this is more for entertainment and sort of saying what not to do. And it's a good example of everyone starts somewhere. Like what I started with on day one, relative to even where I was at like two months after this, it was night and day. And then where I was at years after this, it's just like not even the same fucking human, to be honest. And I remember this like it was yesterday though. So I was uh, at the mall, you know, sarging the fucking, that's exactly what, you know, the, the place to go was when you uh, want to pick up chicks back in the day. So basically I saw this girl that I thought was attractive. I had been trying to approach all day probably at this point from what I remember. And it was just, you know, you get to a point where you kind of just throw yourself into the fire is what you have to do. It's almost like, to me, I almost think of approaching in cold approaches like double Dutch jump rope. I know that sounds fucking weird, but you know how there's like, there's no good time to jump in. Like, I guess there is a time to jump in, but you kind of just have to like go in and just like, if you get smacked in the face, you just have to deal with it. That's sort of how I always viewed cold approaching. And you kind of have to just like not think about it. You kind of just got to like go in and not think about if you're gonna get fucked up or not. Because oftentimes you will get fucked up. And um, not physically, but you know, mentally potentially when you first start. So anyways, this was my first approach ever. And I saw this chick and I initially walked past her and then thought, kicked myself for not approaching her. And I turned around and I jumped into the fire. So I already made a mistake and I hadn't even talked to her yet. I approached her from behind and I pretty much ran after her. So this is the part where I was approaching her from, uh, I saw her, I walked past her, I was thinking, fuck. And then I turned around, I went after to approach her from the side, I guess. So this is a video, there's me, I just turned around right beside her. And now I'm talking to her here, introduce myself, shaking her hand. As you can see, my body pot, look at my fucking outfit too. These shoes, I remember these Puma shoes with this like shitty strap on the top these jeans that don't fit that well, this like shitty V-neck that is not tailored properly, not tailored necessarily, but not doesn't fit very well. And my face just round as fuck, short little like almost buzz cut. You can see me, this is like a classic nervous maneuver too. You can see I've just met her and I'm already dodging eye contact. I've like literally just shook her hand and introduced myself and I'm already looking away to, I don't know, make myself more comfortable. That's just a very standard insecure move to do. And now I look back at her and I am introducing myself, like I said, and here the camera gets a bit closer. You get a nice little glimpse of my round ass fucking head. And um, yeah, here I am probably in the middle of a bulk, just a dirty bulk here. Probably one of my first bulks ever where I like went hard and uh, got a nice little moon face and became extremely unattractive and decided this was a good time to go start cold approaching, which honestly, it, the sooner you do it, the better. So regardless, if you're bulking, don't use it as an excuse. So here I am and I introduced myself to her. And that's part one. This video is really short, so I'm a, but still, there's a lot of backstory that can be broken down from it here. 
And this is uh, not many people are going to be, you know, good enough friends to you to actually get in there with like a fucking cell phone and hide and take videos for you to reflect on for your own personal development. So like we would literally go with each other and like record each other's interactions and then review them later. And it sounds fucking stupid, but, and honestly it kind of is, but at the same time it helped me progress a lot faster. So, and then here he, he went and sat down after this and then he was like, he's literally on a bench pretending to text, but he's right in front of us recording. And I'm having this conversation with her. And you can see I'm just having a conversation. My body posture is not good. I've always had a problem with, especially with my overdeveloped shoulders, I've always had a problem with, you know, rolling my shoulders forward and hunching over. And especially as I got bigger, it became more and more of an issue. But that was one of the things I noticed in this specifically at the time. And you can tell by her body language, she's not exactly feeling it either. Like she has her arms crossed. She's like the distance between us. It's not like there's that much distance, but it's just like sort of going through the motions while she's talking to me and just like, fuck, like get this guy away from me. But that's fine. The point is I was going through exposure therapy and this was my first dose. So here I was continuing to talk with her. And you can see I'm switching the water bottle on my hands because I'm so nervous in my head. I'm insecure as fuck. She's laughing, potentially fake laughing. I'm like trying to come up with some joke here. I just can't stop fucking moving my hands, which is, you know, classic fidgety fucking dude who, this is my first time, like, give me a fucking break, you know? But I'm trying to criticize to show you what it looks like. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure anyone with decent, you know, social intuition would be able to pick up on what's wrong here. But, um, you don't notice it when you're doing it is the point. And this is like stuff that you can point out to actually, you know, make yourself aware of so then you can improve on it. And this is why I'm pointing it out to begin with. So there I'm like, ask for a number. She says, sure. I pull out my phone. And then she gives me her number and I'm putting it in my phone here. My pocket's like hanging out inside <laughs> out of my pants. This shirt's so short, dude. Like definitely didn't fit at all. It's funny how stuff that at the time though, your brain just thinks totally differently. Like stuff at this, looking back on this stuff, it's like, yeah, I, maybe I wouldn't think this way if I hadn't gone through this though to begin with. So I can't really say that. So anyway, I get her number. I give her like a shitty handshake at the end. Nice to meet you. Oh boy. <laughs> and then my buddy Jared says, at a boy. Because I had, at this point, I had been walking around with him for two or three days. And uh, this was like my first approach. So I had watched, he had already done this at least, I think like 30 to 50 approaches in his life which is not very many at all, but like at the time he had more experience than me, which was zero. And I had basically walked around with him and watched him do at least a handful of approaches when I was hanging out with them. And, you know, it really put me in a mindset that I had to, you know, keep up. And honestly, I highly recommend if you do do this, you find a friend that is into, you know, developing as well. Because this made me progress so fucking quick compared to doing it by yourself. If you go out and do it by yourself, you have so many excuses in your head and there's no one to make you feel like shit. When you're going out with somebody who's actually doing it too though, it's almost like a competition where you feel like you have to match what they're doing. So if you go out, for example, I went out with Jared and he already had experience with this. So he was, you know, getting right into approaches off the bat. And all I could think was, you know, you start to feel like shit if you're not matching it or at least trying when he's putting in an effort. It doesn't matter if you get rejected. And to be honest, the high I got from this was better than like, like the, it's almost like, I don't, um, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Dan Bilzerian's interview on Joe Rogan, how he talks about how you get desensitized to the highs in life. So, you know, something that 
when you were a teenager getting like a, a 350Z or something would put you at a 10 out of 10 in terms of you know how stoked you are or how happy you are. And then as you get into your later 20s or for him, like whatever, I don't know, his early 30s and he's like rich, um, for him then he would need a Mustang or what was it, like a Ferrari to get him to a 10 out of 10. And then after that, it's like, you know, you start to get to a point very quickly where better and better things, you just get desensitized to them and they become your new normal and your baseline. Anything less than that is like shitty. So for you, it's like to get that high again, to get, feel like a 10 out of 10, you have to do something even better. And it's the same with anything in life, in my opinion, as well as with girls. So for me, this was like a shitty approach with a shitty number that didn't even end up really like culminating in anything special. Didn't see this girl again. And it didn't matter though. Like the high I got from this was the equivalent to the high I got from my first notch, the equivalent to the high, well, I should say from my first date and then my first notch after that. And then my first, you know, whatever, my first rotation, my first, you know, full, you know, girlfriend, my first, whatever, all of this stuff, the first, like first things are just as important, even if they relatively seem less important to the higher things that you'll eventually get to. And what is the point of all this? What's the point of me saying all this stuff? You know, it's obviously entertaining, first of all, even for people who probably don't even give a shit about developing and doing cold approaches. But for those who feel like, which is a lot of guys, that they've underachieved with women. I might end up going off on a tangent here that might, might be better to do another video of why you need to get the pickup phase of your life done as soon as possible. Uh, I might save that for another video actually now that I'm thinking about it, but basically the moral or the takeaway from this should be that getting in there and getting started is the most important thing. Even if you crash and burn, cause you will crash and burn. And frankly, I crashed and burned a fucking shit ton of times on the first, you know, several. And I don't even think I ended up going on a date till like I had like 10 numbers or 20 numbers or something like that. Like it takes a while to really get into it. Even, even approaching and talking to somebody it seems so easy when you're just looking at it, but once you actually get in there and you're actually in an environment where you're like, okay, here I am by myself, go talk to hot girls. And you're at your university or your college and you're just walking around by yourself and you're just some loner dude who's trying to do approaches. It's a lot fucking harder than it looks like in these videos. And when you first start it, especially once you get into it, you start to, you know, get acclimated and then it's like nothing. You can talk to people like, like you should be able to talk to them like humans. But until you get to that point, you've been socially programmed to be fucking terrified of talking to girls that this entire time, once you actually get in there, you're like, holy shit, if I don't have half a liter of vodka in my system, I can't even fucking communicate with the opposite sex. This is what you've got to get out of your head and reprogram yourself before you end up in your 30s or your 40s and you've like underachieved your entire life with women and you get to a point where you can't even have a, you know, emotionally healthy relationship because you fucked yourself up in your teenager, in your teenage years and your early 20s so much. So the whole point of the pickup stuff isn't to get laid a shit ton. It's not to be a badass. It's not to get some sick notch count. The point is to reprogram your brain and essentially rewire your system so you actually truly believe that you're worthy of getting attractive women and they actually want you. Because until you get to the point where you've got them multiple times and you know you are attractive and you know you're desirable and you know you have inherent value as a man, you're going to have a dependency and have this pedestal mentality where you put your first hot chick on a pedestal and she becomes your everything and she becomes the one chick that, you know, is so different than the rest. And it's just a very emotionally unhealthy mindset to be in when you haven't had this pickup phase. It sounds fucking dumb. Why would you need to be a sleazebag to become emotionally healthy? The reality is, is if you don't go through this phase, of knowing you can get shit and getting girls and you know developing rotations and having the confidence to go through breakups and not you know completely get destroyed from them or you know have the confidence to go on go up to random people and talk to them at a, on a whim it translates into so many aspects in your life not only in job interviews and social interactions with you know coworkers and just family like fucking everything realistically it sounds dumb but it all stems from Stuff like this, where you develop your social prowess, I guess you can call it, and you develop your ability to communicate with other humans more effectively, and you become a better person as a result of it. And it hap it just, you know, bleeds into all areas of your life to a point that it's just beneficial all around. 
and it eventually gets you to a point where you're emotionally healthy enough to have relationships with hot women and not get fucking destroyed because that is what's going to happen if you don't go through this phase and you eventually get the hot chick and then you are you know ball and chain fucking whipped like crazy and don't believe you could get a girl like that again or you're willing to tolerate bullshit because you don't think you can get somebody that hot again or you just don't have experience with enough people to know that what she's putting you through is bullshit or you might not even get the hot one who's a bitch to begin with because you've never been good enough to even get that girl who might be shitty like <laughs> you need to get to a point where you're happy and you get the girls who are quality and you can keep them around and you're not over leveraged in that you feel like you need them to be happy or you put them on a pedestal and you don't think you could replicate that exact same chick again or better should you need to. So that's the whole point of it. It's a bit of a long ramble and probably another topic for another time, but that is my first cold approach and essentially opened the floodgates for me and transformed my life, even though it was a, you know, a shitty approach objectively and didn't really lead to anything. They led to a whole fuck ton of things though, I promise you. So if this is something you are serious about, the sooner you do it and you knock it out, the better, in my opinion. And um, yeah, that's my advice. I'll have more topics to come on this. And I feel like I have a lot of insight that I have just completely over, you know, not really even touched on over the past couple of years because I've been so fucking balls deep in hair loss and bodybuilding pharmacology that I've completely neglected what half of my channel should be. So, And uh, another thing I wanted to say before I end this video, I actually wanted to, I am recording this later than the first part because it's something I thought of after that I want to add on is something that I wish I knew or it's, it becomes very obvious once you start this stuff is that people you watch on YouTube that have approach videos and stuff like that, getting a number does not equate to getting laid. So I used to watch, you know, simple pickup videos and stuff like that when I was younger and it put me in this mindset before I got into all this stuff that every single number they were getting was like the equivalent of a successful pickup. And that's like, when you actually don't do this, you don't really understand that one number does not equal one not for some reason in your, you don't really think of logical outcomes like that. But once you get into this, you start to realize that it takes several numbers to get a date. And it also takes even more numbers than that for dates that convert into lays. And a lot of those numbers are just, you know, duds and these, you know, gurus, like obviously Simple Pickup doesn't post anymore, but something that always bugged me about a lot of these channels is they'll post content of them getting numbers, but never really show either anything after that or outline if it was actually successful or not thereafter and show some sort of evidence of, I don't know, like text messages after or like ideally some footage afterwards if you're willing to videotape the cold approach you know, maybe you'll be willing to videotape something, you know, a date or something. I don't know. I've never seen anyone actually record a first date, but I think that would be some good content. It's kind of getting off track, but um, basically don't trust that you see somebody get a number. Like I could have easily claimed this chick in my first approach ever. I got a number. I could have easily claimed I went out with her or banged her or blah, blah, blah. But that's not the reality of all these cold approaches. Like it takes a lot of practice before you actually like work your not really actually like a good ratio of approaches to actual conversions, I guess should be like the way to outline it. But, uh, you know, like these, a lot of these channels, they never really talked about that stuff. And it puts you in this position where they motivate you to start doing it, which I guess is good, but it also gives you unrealistic expectations for going in that you're suck and your game sucks because you're not getting laid. Whereas you assume that they were prior and then you start to realize oh, they're just, you know, trying to make you believe that they're fucking sick pickup artists when in reality, they're just running around in costumes and picking up numbers and 99% of them aren't actually leading anywhere. So in reality, when you start to get to the good at this stuff, you know, it's not going to be such a low ratio of like numbers to actual conversions, but you know, some of the misleading content you see online should be taken with a grain of salt, with a grain of salt. If they don't actually elaborate thereafter, they lead newbies to you know, let their imaginations run wild, imagining that these guys are, you know, getting laid 24 seven when in reality, they're just walking around collecting numbers and the number doesn't equate to shit. So just be aware of that and have realistic expectations for yourself. Don't get down on yourself if you're not getting laid for even the first few weeks. Like it might take you, you know, 
50 plus approaches before you get laid the first time or even before you go on a date. You don't actually know how this is going to go and you don't want to get down on yourself because, you know, you had unrealistic expectations thinking that fucking Jesse and Kong from Simple Pickup you know, got like a million numbers just like that in every single video and all these hot chicks that they're nailing on the side when you can't even get a date. And just like, keep just keep this stuff, be cognizant to this stuff because it can really fuck with your mindset if you go into this way too, you know, thinking that even like as a nervous guy with shitty game and like you haven't even worked on, you know, maxing out your style or getting in shape or any of this stuff that you could completely change your, you know, results with, you're, you're, you know, you just think you suck because you're not getting results and it's not the case. There's so much room for improvement when you start. It's just about, like I said, you have to throw yourself into the fire, but at the end of the day, nobody on their first, you know, week is even close to where they are a few months thereafter and especially nowhere near they are a year after if you're doing this consistently. So don't get down on yourself and quit. Don't, you know, think poorly of yourself. This happens to everyone, including the guys you see on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, more content like this to come. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. If you want to support the channel, check out Gorilla Mode, Gorilla Mind, my uh, turnkey pre-workout and nootropic formulas. I compel you to pick up your current pre-workout, put the label beside mine, and you will quickly see why ours is quickly becoming an industry leader and it's formulated by me with exactly what I would put in at the dosages that I feel are actually justified to sell in a turnkey product. So highly recommend you check that out and um, anything else I'm affiliated with, you can check out in the video description below as well to support me. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.